thought, fellas, we'll ahead. This is Greg Allison with Green Gregs coming to you on 17 March 22. Time on deck is 22, 2600 hours Central Daylight Time. My friends, as we get in this period of ratcheted up tensions with Russia, with the potential for World War III, there's something you need to know about. The Russians, actually the Soviet Union, developed and fielded a system, a device that you might refer to as a doomsday machine. Yes, yeah, straight out of Dr. Strangelove. And it still exists. It still operates. They call it the perimeter or the dead hand. Yes, my friends, this system exists and it can launch everything Russia has at once, especially after a first, it's designed to operate after a first strike upon Russia. But it's a system that can launch everything they have. It could even be commanded to do so, or Russia could command such a launch. But this system is called Dead Hand because it's meant to be able to operate without any human in the loop or limited humans in the loop, either way. And in fact, the, the part of the problem is we don't exactly know all the trigger mechanisms, or at least the logic of how they're strung together. We'll get into that. We'll talk about that in a second. My friends, this is a scary proposition given of where we're going with Russia right now. Very concerning. This is why you need to prep. This is why you need to get ready. And this is why you need to pay the attention to some of the videos that'll be coming out here over the next few days about things that we might, we might be able to do to avert this conflict. In the meantime, I'm gonna encourage you to subscribe to my channel, bang the notification bell and click all because I share many videos with you on things to keep your eyes wide open, head on swivel so you know what's coming at us. So you can see and prepare and you can share these videos with your friends so they will also know to prepare because when it hits the fan, the more people are prepared, the less it's gonna be looking to eat you. <laughs> Don't be the long for it. Now, um, I'm gonna tell you this too. Uh, a lot of the videos in my system tell you things like how to grow food, how to look for, uh, for uh, the wild medicinals and edibles. Those are important things to know. Going to big box stores. I highly encourage you to do those things right now. But I also have a special. Right now, you can get $150 off if you go to prepwithgregs.com. If you go to prepwithgregs.com, $150 off long-term food storage lasts 25 years. You get 2,000 calories a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. This is a deal to make you a winner because it'll carry you through 25 year last. And my friends, with the kind of inflation we're about to see, this is going to be an investment because it will last. This food will be worth a lot once it's gone through a few years lasting. So breakfast, lunch, and dinner, 2,000 calories a day. It includes also drinks and desserts. Uh, and you get, for uh, the $150 off three month supply, you get six of those buckets that last two weeks each. You can also get $50 off a four week supply and they all last 25 years. And you can click on the go to prepwithgreg.com, the My Patriot Supply logo above. If you click on that, nobody in the industry has a water selection of long-term food storage and My Patriot Supply. Nobody. And they also, so you can get different dietary selections. You can get it number 10 cans instead of the buckets if you so choose. But those are really good for bugging out. They're really good for burying in a cache. And uh, you can open up the little pouches or easy to carry in your backpack should you have to go maneuvers. So uh, there's a lot of advantages to this kind of a uh, scenario if for long-term food storage, which you might need if we're having a nuclear winter, especially, but get the seeds too, because that's what you'll need after the nuclear winter is over to grow your own food. And get those at True Leaf Market, link below for that too. All right, my friends, we're gonna get into this. I'm gonna show you some links here. I'm gonna show you a little bit about this system and hopefully we'll keep this video short. Uh, and we're gonna go over here, bing. Here it is, military.com. And it says, Russia's dead hand is a so is, is present state, a Soviet built nuclear doomsday device. Let's enunciate that very carefully. And here they talk, uh, Blake Stillwell wrote this article. He talks about how, you know, we developed a lot of cool things in the Cold War, GPS. But uh, yeah, some of the things were straight out. It says James Bond movies. This is more like that of Dr. Strangelove. You might say James Bond. And it talks about the uh, nuclear superiority that Russia has at the moment with 1,600 deployed tactical nuclear weapons. We just about got rid of all of our tactical nuclear weapons. We have very few of those left. And they also have another 2,400 
strategic nuclear weapons tied to intercontinental ballistic missiles, and they're all inside of this system. So this makes Russia the most powerful nuclear power in the world. And we talked about that. If you see my recent video with Dr. Peter Vincent Pratt, you need to see that and see the advantages their system has. But, uh, and Dr. Pratt and I talked about this system after the video that we did. So uh, if you ever get a chance to ask him about it, if he comes on some other show or my show in the future, uh, he'd be happy to tell you about this. These systems are tied into perimeter, an automatic nuclear weapons control system. It says automatic. Automatic means without people. And in case you wonder, yes, Russian ICBMs are road mobile, unlike these we have in the United States. So they can move them around. They can hide them. Uh, some other prepping channel was wondering about that. So there you go. Uh, you see it clearly. There's plenty of uh, photographs of these things running down Red Square and other places. And the Red Square is in the Kremlin, if you don't know that. I've been there. <clears throat> it says, in a crisis, uh, that might mean a first strike from the United States, which I don't think that'll be happening. But anyway, high-ranking government officials or military commanders could activate perimeter. Perimeter would guarantee the, the Soviet and now Russia could respond even if their entire armed forces were wiped out. Once switched on, the perimeter can launch the entire nuclear arsenal, Russia's entire arsenal, in response to a nuclear attack. It was, and so this is part of their Cold War doctrine. It says here it's called Dead Hand in the West. That's the Western name for it. And there's a Russian name for that too. Uh, <clears throat> but so we didn't know about this system until we had some good hints in 20, 2009, but we didn't get an official response about the existence of this until 2011. This is some little bit after the wall fell by my friends. Uh, so, and this system was fielded in 1985. Uh, it says and it perimeter would basically launch a command rocket that would fly across Russia and uh, uh, send down signal to all the other systems to launch. It says Russia never confirmed that such a system existed. He said, this is key, never confirmed it existed. But Russian Strategic Missile Forces General uh, Sergei Karakev confirmed it to the Russian newspaper, the Russian newspaper in 2011, saying the U.S. could be destroyed in 30 minutes. 30 minutes. This is before they had the hypersonic missiles they have now. Uh, so now they're suggesting it could be done a lot faster with the new hypersonic missiles. Now, the hypersonic missiles aren't faster than intercontinental ballistic missiles, but if launched from shorter range, you can get to us very fast and invade our radar and defense. We wouldn't even know they're coming in. Yeah, they could launch these things at us, and we might not even know it until the mushroom cloud dries up and go, where did that come from? The early warning systems, yep, they may not activate. <clears throat> but anyway, but that's if Russia does a first strike, which is more likely, especially if you consider what uh, Dr. Pry talked about. But in the United States, similar technologies were developed, but we did not fill them. We kept, or we kept a human in the loop. That was a key thing. We had a person in the loop. Since perimeter is reportedly still acting, there's a link up for that, the danger of an automatic computer-generated nuclear strike still exists. You got to bear in mind, we, gotta, we don't know all the inputs and in operating logic with that triggers this system. We'll talk about this. It's now the Russian President Vladimir Putin has put Russia's nuclear weapons on high alert. He might have taken Russia's doomsday device on notice as well. See that? This could be activated right now. So the logic for this system depends on a combination of uh, sensors that it has deployed that it tries to detect if there has been a nuclear detonation in Russia. It reached pressure waves, seismic waves in the ground, and radiation. Now, in America, in some of our uh, sensor systems, we have voting logic. Like, what does it does it require getting all three of these? Plus, it also requires uh, knowing that it don't, does not get a signal from the command post in Moscow. Once the if they don't have a signal, it assumes that the people are dead. Then it launches or it tries to send a command to, says some bunker, some fogginess about that. But apparently the reason it's called dead hands, it will go, it can go ahead and commence launch with no people involved. So if there were a Tunguska event and you had a pressure wave and a seismic wave and didn't have the radiation signal, or might, maybe it's a radiation, maybe I doubt it. Would that be sufficient to trigger this? We don't know. 
if, if the logics are anded or ORed, what the Boolean logic uh, standards are for this system, what the voting uh, logic is, we do not know. Maybe if, if, if you get multiple pressure and uh, seismic sensors, that might be enough. Does it require getting radiation notation? We don't know this. It's one of the inputs, but is it required to get all these? What kind of voting logic? Yeah, most sensors have voting logic. You have, uh, I know this, we use that in the abort systems for the space launch system that I've worked on. Voting logic amongst our sensors, because you can get false positives, false negatives. <clears throat> but it also includes a loss of signal with a command post as part of the logic, which might could happen for other reasons. Could this accidentally be launched once it's activated? Uh, see, there are some good questions. Now, we don't know. We just frankly don't know. But the fact that they got this uh, is kind of uh, sobering. It is sobering when we consider marching toward a nuclear war with Russia, when we consider getting involved in a World War III with Russia that could escalate, and it could escalate. Remember, one bullet brought us World War I, which brought us World War II also, and probably the Cold War thereafter. We're still living with some of the echoes of World War One, of the bullet that took out Arctic Ferdinand, one man. It put my great, it put my grandpa in the fields in World War One, and my dad in the same uh, areas in France and Germany in World War Two. So this talks about this system here. This is another article in Wired magazine about this. Also shows a profile of, of when the United States originally had nuclear superiority, and we started cutting our stuff back, and Russia ramped up, and they have it now. Okay. We're going to look at this in uh, Wikipedia. See, this is, there's multiple sources for this. Greg Allison did not make this up. And I heard about it forever, saw it in any of these articles. So dead hand right there. Let's see. Uh, the purpose of the dead hand, as described in the book with the same name, is to maintain the second strike capability, ensuring the destruction, uh, uh, ensure that, the destruction of the Soviet leadership would not have prevented the Soviet military from releasing its weapons. Hey, you decapitate the leadership in Russia, it can still launch. See, our system is right the opposite. Our system will not launch unless the leadership is in power and able to transmit the appropriate command codes. Our system is absolutely the opposite of the Russian system. So you got to bear that in mind, friends, when you look at this, there's a lot of material in here, a lot of background. Like I said, we don't absolutely have all the data on this, but here's the enigma of it. Why would you develop a doomsday machine and not tell the opponent? This is a question wrestled with and considered back in 1964, way back in 1964, this question was entertained by Stanley Kubrick. When he did the movie, Dr. Strangelove, he already anticipated this and it was true. So the bomb went off and then it all happens. Break out.